So today let's take a look at this brake fluid tester which was donated to me so thank you for your donation and now let's take a look at it. It's basically this kind of pen with five LEDs, some description on it and the space for one AAA battery 1.5 volts. So here you can see the battery space, the marking on it and from the other side there is some text some instruction how to use it and this indicator with five LEDs. And of course here is my cat and when I start recording something she immediately jumps under my camera. A brake fluid in a car is a liquid that supposed to have a very high boiling point and also a low freezing point. So it doesn't freeze in winter and it doesn't boil when the brakes get hot. Most importantly it has to have a very high boiling point because you really don't want it to boil in your brake system. But unfortunately the brake fluid is also hygroscopic. It means that it sucks in water from the air. Brake fluid absorbs moisture from the air and so it deteriorates. Its boiling point goes down and it can also become corrosive when it contains water. And of course once every couple years you should replace the brake fluid in your car but you can also test it using this tester to see how much water is absorbed in it. And here is a rough indicator of how many percent of water your brake fluid contains. And here is some description. Green LED means that the battery is okay and there is no water detected and more LEDs mean more water absorbed and over 4% is a danger, at 3% you should already replace your fluid and at about 1 or 2% it's still kind of acceptable. And it seems that it measures the water content in the brake fluid based on its conductivity. It uses a pair of electrodes which you basically stick in the fluid and it measures probably the conductivity and I think that the more water in it the more it's conductive and a pure brake fluid probably is non-conductive. So let's try to take a look at it and into it of course and let's also test it at an actual brake fluid of my car. It runs on one AAA battery which goes here and the other way of course and there is a battery cover and it probably has to have some voltage inverter, some voltage boost converter because those LEDs probably require more voltage than this battery supplies. And there is a button, the only button on it is basically this and it has no other controls. And when you press it, a green LED comes on. It's a pure green LED which requires about 3 volts, so it has to have some boost inverter in it. You can turn it on or off using this button and if you leave it on it will turn off automatically after some time. Does it give shocks? No, it probably doesn't use such a high voltage. When it's not immersed in anything it shows a 0% and now it turned off automatically. Let's turn it back on and it shows a 0% which probably happens when there is no conductivity measured. Now let's see what happens if I stick it in a pure water. It should show more than 4% of water, but it doesn't. When I touch it, also nothing. Or when I short it out, still 0%. That's odd. If the measurement is based on the conductivity, it should show something now. Now of course let's try to measure the voltage on the electrodes. Let's try DC. No voltage. Or AC. No voltage. That's weird. It should have some voltage in it to be able to measure the conductivity. It doesn't seem to do anything else than just showing a green LED. One green LED and no other LEDs. And I also tried some different resistors and it's still just this LED. So is it a fake device with just a battery button and LED in it? Now let's take a look in it of course. Let's remove the battery and it probably opens here. The top of it probably clicks in somehow because this one is kind of glued or 
it's just one piece of plastic maybe or it's welded together. It's quite easy to open it. Here is the top of it with the button in it. And here is a circuit board in it. And it seems to be a bit more complex than just a battery button and LED. And there actually are five LEDs, not just one. So it seems to be real. So it contains this battery holder, this button, some transistors, resistors, a capacitor, a microcontroller with absolutely no marking on it, an inductor probably in a boost regulator, some resistors, capacitors and those springs which probably make contact with those electrodes and from the other side it contains another capacitors, resistors, some chip probably, it's probably the boost regulator chip and this is probably a Schottky diode for the boost regulator. Some other resistors probably for those LEDs and another diode and one more diode. So it's basically controlled by this microcontroller. It has a boost regulator with this chip, this diode, some capacitors and this inductor. It has indication LEDs with resistors. They probably go to this microcontroller and it has some resistors and capacitors probably going to those electrodes and that's it. And so let's put the battery back in and test it once more. Here is the green LED which kind of flickers in camera so it's probably multiplexed. Even though it doesn't make much sense, the microcontroller has so many pins and there are just five LEDs and they have to be multiplexed. That's a bit crazy. But if the measurement is not based on conductivity, how does it work? There are two electrodes with no voltage, so does it measure the voltage that goes from those electrodes? It could, but those electrodes would have to be made of different materials, different metals basically. That's weird. They definitely look the same, so there can't be any voltage coming from them when you immerse it in a liquid. And does it do well? Now it shows something. When I short it out, all LEDs light up. That's weird. But why didn't it do this when I shorted out those electrodes? What's the material of those electrodes? Those springs are steel or iron, they are magnetic and those ones non-magnetic. So does it measure conductivity or anything else? Now it shows about 4.5 volts on those electrodes. But why didn't it show this before? Isn't it weird? What do you think about it? So let's try to reassemble it and test it once more. Now it shows the other LEDs. That's interesting. It also shows the voltage here. So was it a poor contact in it? It seems that there was a poor contact. Those springs have to make a contact with those electrodes. And maybe there was a poor contact. Maybe they didn't slide it in enough or they kind of rotated it or tilted it. So it didn't make contact. Or maybe those springs came off in the shipping. Maybe they dropped it in the shipping and those springs kind of bent and lost contact with those electrodes maybe. But now it seems to work and in water it actually shows five LEDs. And when I touch it, two, three, four, five LEDs, depending on how much I press the electrodes because this changes the resistance basically. One, two, three, four, five LEDs. So it apparently indicates the resistance between the electrodes. It's basically a DC resistance meter. So it seems to work and of course here is my curious cat. And now let's try to test it on an actual brake fluid in my car. So here is my brake fluid tank. Here. Let's remove this cover to access it easily. 
and here is my timing belt which I changed recently and it seems to work fine. But now of course the brake fluid, let's open it but not keep it open for too long because it sucks in moisture from the air. So let's open it, here is the tank and let's try to stick it in it. And it shows how many LEDs, two LEDs, 1% of water in my brake fluid basically. So it seems to do something but of course the battery cover was quite loose and it came off when I was doing the measurement and it disappeared inside of my car, which is quite annoying. But now of course let's try it with a fresh brake fluid. I will put some into this container and try to measure it and then I can add a little bit of water to see the effect. I have a roughly calibrated syringe here with 10 divisions on it. So let's try to put 10 syringes into here. So there is 10 syringes of a brake fluid in it and now it's a pure brake fluid. A fresh one. And let's measure it. And it shows just the green LED. 0% water. Which seems right. Now let's try to add some water in it and the question is, should it be a tap water or a distilled water? But the water that comes from the air is kind of distilled as well, so let's try a distilled water. So let's try to add a little bit of a distilled water and I put 10 syringes of a brake fluid in it, so one tenth of a syringe should be one percent of water. And also the question is, are those percentages by weight or by volume? But let's assume it's by volume. So a little bit of distilled water goes in. One division on my scale. Which is like two drops only. The syringe is probably one milliliter and one tenth of a milliliter actually is about two drops. So this should be 1% of water in it and it shows 1% of water. That's nice. It seems to work. Now let's try 2%. Two extra drops. One division on my scale, on my syringe and let's try to test it now. Let's try to stir it a little bit before this of course. And... It shows 1%. So now let's try 3%. Another division on my scale or two drops. That's it. Now let's try to stir it and measure it. It shows 2%. Now let's try 4%. Another two drops or one division on my syringe. And let's stir it and it shows... 3%, it's blinking, it's probably not stirred enough. Still 2%. So let's try 5% of water. And it shows... The 3% LED is on all the time now. So let's try 6% of water, another two drops. So let's try 7% now. Eight percent of water. It does measure the water content, but it reads less than it should. Now let's try 10%. And here you can see the boiling point of the brake fluid, which is quite high, 260 degrees Celsius. It seems to be a nice indicator, but the actual water content can be almost the double of what it reads. 
So be aware of it. Or maybe my testing technique is wrong. Should the percentage be by weight? Or should I have tried a tap water? So let's quickly repeat the experiment with tap water. So it does measure something, but the reading has to be multiplied by two to get the actual water content, very roughly. Which means that it's still probably fine at one percent, but when it shows two percent, you should already replace your brake fluid. It's less sensitive than it should be, even though the one percent LED is quite sensitive. It sometimes blinks, even with a fresh brake fluid. As long as some moisture didn't get into my bottle, actually. So I would say that two percent LED means replace, but anyway, I can't guarantee it and... In any case, you should always replace your brake fluid once every couple years, or... Stick to the brake fluid change interval recommended by your car maker. Now I tried to clean the electrodes and they kind of come out. Bloody hell. It falls apart. Are the internals full of brake fluid? Let's take a look. And maybe a little bit of it leaked inside. So this is Diet Gnu Wild and see you in my next videos and thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And of course I still plan to take a look at a lot of mains voltage LEDs, a lot of dodgy chargers and also a gas leakage detector and a carbon monoxide detector.